In today's video, I will tell you the top 5 foods that you should include in your diet to burn belly fat. The top 5 foods that I am going to tell you are crucial for your results. And the best thing is that these are all simple food items that are easily available in markets. These are not fancy, organic, exotic superfoods. You don't need all those things. Friends, before moving ahead, it is important to understand the science of fat-burning foods. Often on YouTube and in your neighborhood, you may have heard that there are some special foods, some special drinks that directly go into your body and burn fat, such as lemon and honey and hot water, green tea, ginger, amla, aloe vera, juice, apple cider vinegar, etc. But what is actually happening here? What is the real science behind this? The truth is that these foods do not burn your fat. Yes, they may suppress your hunger, and due to that, your diet quantity gets reduced, and unintentionally, a calorie deficit is created in your diet, which leads to your body going into fat-burning mode. But why go unintentionally? Why don't you aim for a calorie deficit with your eyes open? When you can aim with your eyes open, why do it with your eyes closed? Basically, the real game here is to reduce your diet quantity so that a calorie deficit is created and your body goes into fat-burning mode. No food will burn your fat, only a calorie deficit will burn your fat. It's a simple concept. Diet quality determines your health and diet quantity determines your weight loss. Let me tell you the secret of healthy eating. The secret is to simply get more from less. More nutrition from fewer calories, more satiety from fewer calories, more value from less cost, more substance, and less fluff. This is what I call skillful eating. This is the secret to healthy eating and to burning belly fat. If you consciously increase the quality of your diet, then automatically your diet quantity will be reduced. If someone is eating only whole foods, vegetables, fruits, eggs, milk, meat, paneer, they won't overeat a lot. Let's go to the top five foods for fat loss. Friends, it sounds easy to say, if you wanna create a calorie deficit, then eat less. But just eating less is not effective advice. Eating less will increase your hunger. You may endure it for 10 days, 20 days, or even a month, but ultimately it will not be sustainable in the long term. You won't be able to focus on work due to hunger, your energy will always be low, and at some point, people's willpower to resist hunger ends and they revert to their old eating habits. In fact, this is the reason why 95% of diets fail. They are not sustainable. If you want to be in that 5% group who sustain their fat loss diet and achieve results, you will have to do things differently. You will have to do things smartly. Just eating less is not enough. Yes, you have to eat less, control portions, and reduce your diet quantity. But along with that, you have to improve your food choices. We have to choose foods with low calorie density, which means high volume foods. What kind of foods are these? Think about it. If any food has high water content, high air content, or high fiber content, then naturally the volume of that food will increase and calorie density will decrease. Again, getting more from less. If you eat 100 calories, it can take up a significant amount of space in your stomach. Examples include vegetables and some fruits. They either have high fiber or high water content, or both. As a rule of diet, I have always recommended that in your daily diet, you should have 500 grams of fruits and vegetables. Half a kilo is not a big amount. A decent sized apple is 150 grams. This is a basic rule of a fat loss diet. In low calorie density foods, let's talk about some other top examples. First, melons and berries. Watermelon, muskmelon, and berries like strawberries are very low density fruits. In 100 grams, they have only 30 calories. Half a kilo of watermelon has only 150 calories. Compare this to a high calorie fruit like a banana, which has around 100 to 120 calories due to its high natural sugar content. For the same 120 calories, you can eat 400 grams of watermelon, muskmelon, or strawberries. Think about it. Will your stomach be full for a long time? Melons have the added benefit of high water content which keeps you well hydrated. Apart from melons and berries, citrus fruits like oranges and seasonal fruits are also very good, low in calorie density. However, you have to eat fruits directly. 
not drink their juice, because then you would have removed all the fiber, and it's because of the fiber that these fruits become high in volume. Fruit juices are not a good idea for a fat loss diet. Next food, popcorn. If you pop the corn by roasting it, then its volume increases. It becomes a good, low-calorie snack. Fluffy, high in volume, due to which their satiety increases. Like popcorn, makana too is a very good snack. In fact, makana is better than popcorn, with fewer calories and more protein. These two are a thousand times better than unhealthy snacks like chips or namkeen. In this category, next, zero-calorie beverages. Make your tea and coffee of zero calories. And I'm telling the truth, in the beginning, you may face the inertia to make the switch, but it becomes delicious. Lemon tea, iced lemon tea, iced tea, black coffee, cold brew, kava. If you want to drink milk tea or coffee in the fat loss diet, then definitely drink it, but only once a day. So friends, these are the low calorie density foods. Include them in your fat loss diet. You will be able to eat big portions, hunger management will be good, and the fat loss diet will feel easier. Next food category, high satiety food, meaning those that make you feel full for a long time after eating. Satiety means the feeling of satisfaction. Again, the same principle, getting more from less. On the screen, you can see a chart where the satiety of different foods is compared. As you can see, highly processed foods like cakes, cookies, chocolates, donuts, and potato chips are low satiety foods. Their satiety is better than white bread, whereas protein-rich foods like eggs, meat, and fish have significantly higher satiety than white bread. Similarly, fruits have a better satiety score than white bread. Among other carb sources, rice, whole grain bread, whole grain pasta, and potatoes have better satiety than white bread. In fact, there is an extra line about potatoes. Potatoes' satiety is very good, and they are the best in terms of satiety. You can see the difference in calories from potatoes, whether it's mashed potatoes or basic human potatoes. Then your meal's satiety will increase, and you will end up getting more satisfaction from the same calories. Potatoes' satiety is more than any grain corn, sorghum anything. So, potatoes are my personal favorite. Foods with lots of sugar, salt, and fats have low satiety and high calorie density, which makes them one of the worst options to have in your diet. In this chart, you saw that the satiety of all protein-rich foods was higher than that of white bread. White bread is used as a reference point in this chart. High-protein foods have also outperformed most carb proteins in satiety scores. And the reason behind this is that on a gram-to-gram -gram basis, protein has the highest gram value compared to fats and carbs. So imagine you are eating equal calories from pure protein, pure carbohydrates, and pure protein, 150 calories. So out of these three, protein will win. It keeps you full for the longest time. And friends, it is the best producer of fat loss ingredients which are rich in low-protein ingredients. So everywhere it is said, eat high protein, eat high protein. You have to choose your protein source smartly. Do not choose foods that have a lot of calories along with protein. Then there will be no point in maintaining a calorie deficit. So, the first condition is, you may get decent protein in chicken or butter chicken, but you will get a lot of calories along with it because a lot of fats will also be added there. We need more from less, not more from more. And so, the best protein sources for a fat loss diet are what we call lean proteins, which have maximum protein and minimum fats and carbs, such as chicken breast, fish, whey protein, low-fat paneer. Another clever diet substitution you can do is replace your carb sources with protein-rich carb sources. For example, you can replace rice with legumes or sprouts, so in the same calories, you will get a little more protein, improving your diet quality, your diet satiety. Next food category, high-fiber foods. These are basically your non-starchy vegetables, such as green leafy vegetables, fenugreek, spinach, mustard greens, cruciferous and sweet vegetables, such as pumpkin, bottle gourd, bitter gourd. All these are rich in nutrition and fiber and very low in calories, which makes them a great option to have in fat loss diet, getting more from less. Friends, dietary fiber has many benefits. It swells in the stomach, occupies more volume, increases ET, also slows down gastric emptying. In fact, research has shown that if you increase 14 grams of fiber in your diet, then your calorie intake will automatically decrease by 10%. That is, if the diet is high in fiber, then your stomach will easily be full with 20% less calories. Therefore, one should have a high fiber diet during fat loss. 
Plus, dietary fiber is great for your digestive health, prevents constipation, promotes regular bowel movements, hence it is called nature's broom. Green leafy vegetables are great. Include them in your diet. Find ways to sneak them into your diet. And an added bonus, all high-fiber vegetables are also high in micronutrients, i.i., the essential minerals and vitamins that our body needs for peak health and performance. Again, the basic rule of diet is to have 500 grams of fruits and vegetables daily. Next food category, low-calorie flavorings and condiments. To make food tasty, condiments and flavorings are needed. And the interesting thing is that most condiments and flavorings are zero calories. Our Indian spices, ginger, garlic, lemon, mint, coriander, salt, chilies are all zero calories, and the taste comes from these, like curry leaves. So add flavors, not calories. An honorable mention is caffeine. Studies have clearly shown that caffeine is an effective hunger suppressant. That is, after consuming caffeine, your hunger remains curbed for a few hours. In the next meal, you will be satisfied by eating less, or you will be able to go without a meal for a long time. But it is important that you use caffeine smartly. For example, with a high-protein morning breakfast, you can take black coffee, one cup. It will keep you energized in the earlier half of the day, and your hunger will also be managed. Zero-calorie caffeinated beverages should be used smartly. In this video, we discussed zero-calorie beverages and make sure that you avoid caffeine drinks in the later half of the day. Caffeine has a half-life of eight hours, and if you take caffeine in the evening, it will remain in your blood at night too, and your sleep will be affected. You will not get sleep, and without sleep, the whole game will get spoiled. So, that's it for this video. I hope you got a lot of useful information. You must have understood what is the correct food choice in a fat loss diet. What are your favorite foods in a fat loss diet? Do let me know in the comments. What are your go-to beverages in a fat loss diet? I will meet you very soon in the next video. Till then, take care, stay fit.